So you're writing in to me and asking me, what kind of brush should I use? What's the best cut brush? Well, in the States, in my opinion, it's the Purdy, but a lot of guys are telling me that they like a different brush. But whatever brush you choose, I think we would all agree that it has to be an angle sash brush in order to cut, okay? And the reason being is that when you're cutting, you're going to come across corners like this. Very hard to get a flat brush into a corner. And I'll show you what I mean. If I don't have an angle sash brush here, I'm going to have a bunch of bristles competing to get into this corner. But as it is, since I have an angle sash brush, just look at the top of that. Zoom in up there. I can just get the end of my brush in there, you see? And when I'm doing a corner, I land the brush here, two inches away, and I just push up with the paint. I don't want to go too far up. If I get too close, I'll miss the target. Okay, so some of the basic things about cutting is that you bring a lot of paint to the surface, but you put it down here. You don't want to bring it up too close, okay? Now, I'm a left-handed person. I'm going to switch my brush around as I'm doing it, so just watch what I'm doing. The, the high-end tip is now in the corner. Just bring them over here. I want them to see this. I, st I did this when I was a teenager. I started doing this. I just vibrate the brush just to get it into that corner. I'm working on a texture. It's very hard to just go over a texture without the bristles jumping off of the bumps and landing where you don't want them. And so I'm just going to jostle the brush into that edge right there. I don't do it all the time because it's time consuming, but when I'm in the corner and I'm my brush may hit this part and this part. I'm just going to jostle it just like that. Okay, now, if you're fast, that's good. But if you're too fast, you're probably going to get paint where you don't want it. So go as fast as you can. But this is probably the slowest part of your job, this precision cutting. Okay, notice how now I'm turning the brush on. I, so I went like this. The high end of my brush is here. Watch this. And now I'm turning it around and I'm using the brush in a different way. You gotta be able to use your brush in both directions. This way you can, you can cover, you can hit it with two coats. What do I mean by that? So, your texture has, it's three-dimensional. If you just go like this, watch this. I'm going to exaggerate my point here, watch this. You see all of that I missed? This is the point. You see all of the white in there, now watch this. Oh, it's covered now, right? That's the point. So when you're cutting, you're gonna go this way. And then you're going to go this way. For the reason that you saw in the example. So a couple of tips to do this right. Number one, you want to be close to the action with your eyes. You don't want to be too high you want to be the level or just under it. I'm just under it. Secondly, the way you hold your brush is important. I'm letting my two fingers hold this brush. It's most comfortable for me. Maybe not for you. But now you see how I'm holding it? I want it, my fingers have to be close to the bristles because I have most control over it like this. Notice how I keep knocking the paint off? I don't want too much paint on the end of that bristle. 
Oh no. Not at all. Too much paint will force it up where you don't want it. <coughs> Third tip. Um, hold your breathing so that you're not doing this and then you move your arm and then what do you have? You have a mess. Okay, so if I hold my breathing in, I'm more likely to control, right? Control where the brush moves. Fourth tip is this. You want to use, well, you don't have to, but you may want to use a paint extender. Um, for latex paint, uh, you just put a, um, an ounce in for every gallon. And it really keeps the brush from getting all gumped up with paint. Now, I'm not using an extender in this, but if you're cutting all day with the same brush, you're either going to wind up cleaning it out at least once, or you'll use an extender, which will keep it nice, or you'll mess it up. You'll do a messy job. I want to show you something else. Just come in close. <coughs> okay. <coughs> if this were a dark paint, you'd be really conscious about getting dark splatter on this. Okay? When you do this, when you lift the brush up, here's what's happening. Little specks are splashing off. Here's a way to avoid that. If you're using a very a, a dramatic color difference between the wall and the trim. Here's a way to avoid that. If you, uh, if you want to avoid using tape and everything else, watch this. Watch what I'm doing. You see what I'm doing? I'm not lifting my brush off of the wall, am I? Think about it. What do you think that does? There's no splatter. When I do this, if you could look, you'd see little particles falling. It's just something you learn. What, the first time I learned that, I was painting a light color and maroon trim. And so I was going up and down. I had a bunch of splatter on my woodwork. I said, what happened? Figured it out right away. As when you do this, watch, you see that? It flicks paint. But if you do this, you don't lift the bristles up. You see that? There's no splatter. So I'm not lifting the, when I get near my woodwork, I'm not lifting it off the wall. This way there's no splatter. Okay, you can come behind me. Beautiful. Can they see? Yeah. You beautiful. Okay, now. When you cut, do two coats. If your customer looks close, they're going to see. And if you think that that's enough, it's not. I don't care if you're using the best paint, seriously. You gotta hit it twice. And the way you do that is to go around the room where you began and start from there, okay? If you like the video, please click on like, subscribe to my channel. Tell me how you do it. I get a lot of nice suggestions from folks like Mike, Dan Childs, and more. Thank you for uh, putting your comments in the bottom. See you on the next one.